In this video, let's take a quick walkthrough of partitioning in Cosmos DB. And we'll begin by taking a look at a Cosmos DB container. The Cosmos DB container is a uh, data model agnostic way of saying collection, graph, or table. So you can use these words synonymously. A container is elastically scalable in nature and can scale across both the storage and throughput as separate dimensions. What's interesting about a Cosmos DB container is uh, because they're elastic in nature, you can provision containers that are very small, handling just a handful of requests per second across a small data set, and growing them to uh, something very large where you're handling tens of millions of requests per second across many petabytes of data. What makes this possible is this concept called a partition key. Users supply a partition key to Cosmos DB, and Cosmos DB treats that as a logical hint for how to distribute data on a, uh, onto a scaled out underlying set of physical partitions, as well as uh, using this as a hint for efficiently routing queries to the appropriate underlying partition. Now, it is very important to choose a good partition key for your application. In fact, this is likely going to be the number one uh, design decision you'll make with respect to Cosmos DB. And so what we'll do here is give you an example of choosing a partition key and try to demystify what happens underneath the scenes uh, so that you can better choose a good partition key for your application. In this example scenario, we have chosen user ID as our partition key. And what's important to note here is partition keys are a logical partitioning abstraction. And so each one of our user IDs, let's say user ID equals Andrew, user ID equals Bob, each of them are going to be a logical partition containing a set of records. Cosmos DB will then take these logical partitions and compact them to a smaller number of physical partitions so that you have a very frugal use of uh, the underlying compute hardware. And the means for mapping logical partitions to physical partition is this technique called consistent hashing. The nice thing about consistent hashing is number one, it has a hashing mechanism so that you get a nice pseudo random distribution where you're load balancing all of these uh, partition keys uh, across a broad spectrum of values such that you don't have to worry about having things like sequential uh, IDs uh, impact your skewness for how you collocate data on the underlying partitions. So if you have, let's say, ID 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you don't have to worry about all of them landing on the very first partition. Instead, the hashing mechanism will effectively load balance them across a very broad spectrum of values. Now, Cosmos DB will uh, provision a number of physical partitions underneath based off of your actual storage consumption, as well as the amount of throughput that you have provisioned. And so let's say for sake of example here, Cosmos DB has noticed that by pro uh, provisioning four physical partitions, that this particular workload neither has a bottleneck on storage or throughput. What will happen is uh, it'll divide the spectrum of hashed partition keys uh, from zero to max value, it'll divide them into quarters such that the first quarter will map to the first physical partition, the next quarter of hashed partition key values will map to the second partition, and so forth. And by compacting a, a high number of partition keys uh, into a smaller number of physical partitions, you yield a very low total cost of ownership and a frugal use of hardware. Now, the second benefit of using consistent hashing is it allows you to minimize the amount of any kind of rebalancing or reshuffling of data whenever a partition needs to grow. And so Cosmos DB will actually proactively monitor its partitions. And as they approach uh, some underlying thresholds, Cosmos DB will actually elastically grow uh, the container. And what it'll do is it'll notice that, hey, in this example here, partition number four, that's containing Dharma, Sharish, Karthik, Rima, and a few other uh, tenants or user IDs data, it's starting to fill up. And so what it'll do is it'll subdivide those range and say, you know what, instead of backing this range of partition keys, 
uh, with a single partition, if we back it by two partitions, we can effectively double the storage capacity as well as double the throughput capacity for this particular range of values. And so half of these user IDs will get uh, located on a child partition one, and the other half of these uh, partition keys will get uh, co-located on partition, uh, child partition number two. All of this will happen behind the scenes uh, uh, transparent to the application. And so from the, trans, uh, from the application's point of view, you now have a very convenient database that transparently just and seamlessly grows as your storage and throughput requirements grow. Uh, now, while Cosmos DB will take care of 99% of the effort for partition management, you still now need to put in 1% of the effort, and that is just choosing a good partition key. You want to choose a partition key that uh, fits two design goals uh, at a very high level. Number one, you want to choose a good partition key such that you can distribute your overall request and storage volumes across uh, a very large number of partition keys as evenly as possible. And what you want to do is you want to avoid having any kind of hot partition key. I'll give you an example of what a hot partition key might look like. Let's say for sake of example, we have an IoT device telemetry scenario uh, in which we have many, many devices emitting their uh, status back up into a database. Now, this is naturally going to be a very write-heavy workload. And if we were to choose something like the current time as our partition key, uh, we'll end up with a hot partition key. And I'll explain. While current time might effectively distribute your uh, storage over time, the problem here is that from a throughput perspective, at any given time, all of the requests coming in will have the exact same partition key value. And what that means is that any given time, all of those requests will get routed to the same underlying physical partition, making that physical partition very hot, while all of the other physical partitions are left idling. This isn't a very effective uh, or frugal use of underlying resources. And so what you want to do is you just want to make sure that you choose a partition key such that your both your request volume as well as your storage volume uh, are nicely evenly distributed. Number two is you want to choose a partition key that allows you to efficiently route your queries as well as scope your transactions. Unlike many other distributed databases, Cosmos DB supports uh, atomic transactions over multiple records at a time. And so uh, in order to do this, Cosmos DB actually scopes these multi-record atomic transactions to a particular partition key value. And therefore, if you have requirements around atomic multi-record transactions, you do want to incorporate that into your choice of partition key. Furthermore, you want to choose a partition key that allows you to efficiently route your queries such that the partition key can be represented in the where clause uh, or filter for the, for the queries. I'll give you an example. Let's go to our first example where we've partitioned a container by the user ID. If I were now to run a query that says select star from this container where user ID is in Alice comma Bob, then the SDK can actually parse the query, see that we're going to look for Alice and Bob's data, and uh, it can do a quick lookup to go, ah, Alice and Bob are in partitions one and two, so I can just ask uh, for Alice and Bob's data in partitions one and two. However, if we omit the partition key, where we do a query that says something like, select star from this container where birth date is October 20th, well, now it's possible that every partition may or may not have relevant data. And so what will happen is the uh, client will have to issue a fan out request and check every partition just to be sure. Now, when you're doing an occasional fan out, the impact is actually very minimal because all of these requests can be heavily parallelized and we have a, an index uh, distributed on each one of these underlying partitions. Now, the problem here is if you have very high concurrent uh, degree of fan out. Uh, or lots of con uh, fan outs uh, happening at the same time. So if you have 10,000 fan out queries happening per second, this is where 
you can potentially have every single one of these partitions starting to get a bit hot. And so uh, given these two design goals, the way you want to think about uh, how to choose a good partition key is first you want to ballpark your scale needs in terms of the overall size and throughput. An order of magnitude is uh, good enough. What you want to get a feel for is how uh, heavy are these fan out queries going to be. If at the end of the day you only have let's say one gigabyte of data, then a fan out query is actually going to be the equivalent to a non fan out query. So honestly, like that, that becomes much less of a concern. You also want to now start to understand the workload. Is it read heavy or is it write heavy? Uh, what is the ratio of reads to writes? Are you getting five reads for uh, every write? Um, in fact, if you can, you want to try to ballpark the concurrency and latency requirements for each of these different types of categories of requests. And the reason why you're doing this is you want to operate off of Pareto principle and optimize for the bulk of your workload. It's very difficult to choose a partition key that can represent 100% of your workload, but it's still fairly easy to choose a partition key that uh, represents the bulk of your workload. And engineering is all about mastering the art of choosing the right trade-offs. If you have a read-heavy workload, you'll want to get an understanding of what your top three or five queries look like. And if you start looking at the where clause uh, for common filters, that'll all give you a lot of hints for what a good partition key candidate might be. For writes, you want to understand your transactional needs. Uh, if you have multi-record transactions that need to be done atomically, well, you want to try to bake that into your choice of partition key design. Furthermore, you might want to understand the ratio of your insert ver inserts versus updates. I bring this up not because this particular point has an impact on partitioning, but as you go down this exercise of understanding your workload, you can also leverage this work to start understanding how you might want to model your uh, object model in Cosmos DB. As a general and final tip, don't be afraid of having too many partition keys. Partition keys are a logical abstraction. And in fact, the more partition key values you have, the more scalability you have. You don't want to artificially limit the number of partition keys. And that's because if you only have, for sake of example, two partition key values, Cosmos DB can only at best scale your workload across two underlying physical partitions. However, if you have a billion uh, partition key values, Cosmos DB can always start with a frugal uh, number of physical partitions. It can even be one partition, but this gives you room to grow up to a billion physical partitions. Uh, and so it really does give you a lot more room for flexibility in terms of scalability. Given all things equal uh, in terms of optimizing around your workload, if you can choose something more granular, it's generally a good practice to do so. This concludes our video on partitioning. Thank you for watching.